Hello again, and take a look down there. You're not looking at the mighty dash, you're not looking at the mighty cuz, you're not looking at the mighty anything. This down here is probably the unlikeliest sight you will ever see at KSFO, and that is the craft known as Misbehave, and this is a Republic P-47 Thunderbolt. And take a look in all of her glory. Just look at this with her gigantic Pratt & Whitney radial engine and four-bladed Hamilton standard prop and giant landing gear and oversize fuselage to accommodate all the rest of it and be uh, tolerant of untrained pilots and be beefy enough and strong enough to get them home safe. If you're wondering, where does the name Thunderbolt um, ring a bell? It is uh, that the great-grandchild of the P-47 Thunderbolt of World War II fame, which was better as an attack plane than as a fighter, and better as a dive bomber than anything, and built with a gigantic beefy fuselage that would take almost any amount of punishment, and then you wonder, Thunderbolt, 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 where, where, where does that come from? Uh, think of the A-10, which is colloquially known as the Warthog, but whose official name is the Thunderbolt II, and that is the great-grandchild of this little honey. Now, I got turned on to this plane because a pilot buddy of mine who flies a tail dragger, a decathlon when he's not flying an airliner, said, uh, sent me a link and, and said, uh, well, let me show you the link. He sent me this link. Let me just uh, pop in here and just give this a listen. Now keep this sound in your head. Look at that fuel coming out of there. Well, he sent me that, and it certainly is impressive. And he says, uh, can you get a hold of one of those for the sim? And I said, oh, I don't know. So I looked around and I found out to my great delight that uh, 8A made one for FSX. And of course we're in P3D, but we use the uh, Flight uh, Sim Estonia migration tool and we sort of tricked it and we got it loaded in. I don't know if it runs perfectly, but it runs perfectly fine. Now, bear in mind, I don't know crap about this plane. I do know that to start it, we do want the canopy to be open. There we are. That's much better. And I do know that uh, uh, this here is the uh, comm radio, comm radio, nav 1, nav 2. Let's just see what happens when we engage them. All right, that's tuned to something and something and continuous or transmitting. Okay, this is a kind of rudimentary beacon. And there is, this is an I, uh, identification friend or foe. This is our oxygen regulator. There, of course, is our stick. Standard turn and bank, standard climb, standard chrono, altitude, which is, I believe, let's double check, is 3027. And how do you like that? It's set. This is the mixture control, and you can see it offers full rich, auto rich, and auto lean, and idle and cutoff, which we're not interested in. Landing gear here, flaps here. This is our auxiliary fuel tanks. These are our main fuel tanks. We have to have the emergency fuel pump on, and our generators have to be on. Don't have to worry about pitot heat at the moment. Mags are over here. This is... Well, these are bombs. No, these are our wing tanks, I'm sorry. This can jettison them. 
or it'll jettison our bombs. Well, we'll try to not bother with that. This is our cowl flaps, and I don't think you can open them on the ground, even though you're, you ought to be able to to start. So we're going to start up, and we're going to open them almost immediately. This is to prime our uh, engine, so let's do that. About four strokes. And yes, it does make a difference. And one more. Okay, these are our hydraulics. This is suction, which I suspect powers the uh, artificial horizon here. I'm not sure what else it powers. This lever and this gauge have to do with the turbocharger. This is a turbocharged engine. Some other air engines at the time were supercharged, which uses gearing to turn a compressor. This uses a turbine to spin a compressor, just like in your American uh, Ford uh, EcoBoost engine. The difference is this. In an EcoBoost engine, let's just say, here is the engine and the exhaust is right there, and the turbocharger is right there, and the plumbing goes over to the intake side, and it travels at most about that far. In this airplane, you see that duct down there? That is where the turbocharger is. I don't know why it's there, and I don't know how it works there, but there it is. So that's that. And that's why there's a little bit of uh, turbine lag in this thing. You uh, shove the throttle forward, and if the turbocharger is on, it thinks about it for a second. This was never the greatest dogfighting plane. It was a great plane to dive out of the sky. You could escape an enemy by diving. And this plane can almost go supersonic. There were reports that it had, but that's probably because air pressure built up in the pitot tube and it led to erroneous indications. But, you know, this, this weighs almost twice as much as a Spitfire which gives you some idea of just how beefy the airplane is. And it is a single-seater airplane. So what we're going to do is we are going to start up and taxi out to runway one. And you can't see out of this thing, as you can see. And the way you taxi is by zigzagging back and forth. And I'll show you that in a second. But in the meantime, uh, let's get us started. So the way you do it is you bring the props full forward, the mixture full rich, you prime, you make sure that your magnetos are on, that your battery is on, and it is, that you're drawing fuel from the main tank, and we are, and then what we do is we spin this thing, which is an energizer, and what that really does is it, that if I had to guess, and I'm not sure completely, it spins a big flywheel which supplies enough momentum to spin this giant prop without it um, just simply dying from the drag from the compression of the, I think it's 18 radial cylinders. So this is a massive amount of machinery it's going to spin. Uh, that's the gun sight, by the way. This is the precursor of the old heads-up display. Anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to make sure our parking brake is set, which doesn't quite work on this. So let's just use the flight simulator control because otherwise we'll start this up and we'll start to roll and that'll be really embarrassing. So what we're going to do is we are going to grab this and listen to it spin up just like in that video. Only it doesn't turn the prop when it does. It probably should, but hear that? And I don't know where the indication is that it's rising. I think you just wait a few seconds. And then, cut it over to the other side. And watch it die. I flooded it, so let's try it one more time. And I'm going to actually just leave the throttle mostly right there. And I'm going to hold the starter switch over on the right. It always takes at least two tries, by the way. And it dies. One more time. And I hope I don't kill my battery here. I might not have primed it enough either. Hmm, 
too much. Let's see, it should go to about there. Uh, let me just double check, make sure that our emergency pump is on. It is. Generator switch is on. Pito heat is off. Our magnetos are on. Both batteries are on. That should do it. Let me give it one more stroke or two of priming. Now that we've cranked the engine enough, we've probably pumped all the fuel out of it. And one more. And let's just see. This was this was made for 22-year-olds with a few hundred hours of training, so it's sort of got to be idiot-proof, which means, with any luck, it uh, will be me-proof as well. There we go. Ah, look at that. So we're going to idle just about there, and we're just going to let our temps come up. Wow. Look at this. All right, now I'm going to open up our cowl flaps just a little bit. There's our carburetor air temperature. Oil temperature is coming up. Fuel temperature is fine. Cylinder head temperature is climbing. You see that? 88, 89, 96 centigrade Celsius. It's amazing that it's in Celsius this early on. I'm going to open up the cow flaps about halfway. Look at them blossom open like that. I don't want to close it. I just want to uh, tweak it a little. A little bit. A little bit more. A little touchy. There we go. About 50% and that's where we're going to set it for takeoff. Just going to wait for our oil temps to come up. We're good. Just going to wait for a second or two. The other thing we will do... Well, we'll do it before we take the runway as we'll uh, close our canopy, which you do by grabbing that right there. And this is our aileron trim that's neutral. Our rudder trim is neutral. Our flaps are up. They're right there. That's good. Landing gear, you know. Be nice if this switch worked. There, it's down. All right. Monitoring our temps. Our manifold pressure is fine. Our hydraulic pressure is in the green. Our suction is good. You can see our artificial horizon has settled down because there's now a vacuum powering it. And our cylinder head temperature is coming up. Our oil temperature is just rising above the... Our oil uh, pressure uh, is rising just above the peg. All right, so we're going to start to taxi out. And I'm going to show you how we sort of zigzag around here. It's kind of uh, funky, but you'll, you'll get the idea. You can't see straight out of it. I could cheat by sort of going like this, but that's cheating. So the way you taxi this plane, let me just check to make sure our nose wheel is unlocked. Tail wheel lock should come off so we can steer. Cockpit vent can op come open a little bit, because why not? And uh, now that our cylinder head temperature is creeping up to normal, and our oil temperature and pressure are good, we'll take off the parking brake, and now we will look this way. And we will start to turn for that taxiway right there, using a little differential braking and tailwheel steering. Now, I'm going to straighten out by guessing. Then we're going to zig over, shift our head over here. And we're going to look out this side. And now we're going to keep our head right there. And now we're going to slowly come back the other way. And in a second, we're going to look out this side, like so. our taxiway line again, and we're going to cut back in on it, 
like so. And we're going to try to overshoot it a little so that we can see it on the other side of our nose. And so, boom, we're going to switch our heads around there and spin ourselves a little bit that way. And now we've got a good vantage on our runway turnoff, and so we'll uh, take the runway at the intersection right there because there's no reason to use the whole thing. And we'll make our turn there. And we'll aim for that center line right there, and we'll overshoot it so we can look at it on this side. A little bit more. Okay, we're right on it. I can see we're equidistant from the wigwag lights, so that probably means, and I'll cheat right here, that we're close enough to that line, and we are. We'll hold short right there, and we'll do a run-up. Uh, first things first, we'll close the canopy. And thunk, there it is. We will uh, hold on our brakes, come up to 2,000 RPM, and we'll cycle the props three times. Not sure if that's necessary in this plane, but it is. the mechanism for these things is pretty old and pretty standard, so I'm guessing it couldn't hurt. And down come the props, and up come the props, and down come the props, and up again. do a mag check in one second. And we'll sneeze. But first we'll... <coughs> excuse me. Uh, we'll turn on our pitot heat. And check our fuel selector, check our gear, check our flaps, which should be flap zero. <coughs> and... Uh, at 2,000 RPM, we will switch over to our right. We'll note a slight drop. Come back to both. Comes back up. See, this is very touchy. I don't want to shut down the power right here. Okay, there's our drop. Now, I don't know whether we take off on full rich or auto rich. Let's for the moment go full rich and then we'll lean back. So let's take the runway. And again, the only way you can see in this plane is by seeing out the side. There's not a lot of rudder authority I've just discovered. But we'll uh, taxi into position, try as best we can there. We may not be precisely lined up. Um, and I don't know, in the, in the DC-3, you, at this point, you turn on your tailwheel lock. So let's do that with this. Presume it works mostly the same way. And what you do is we're going to pull our manifold pressure up to about 25. We're going to make sure it's stable. Then we're going to advance it to 52, which is military power. And we're going to take the hell off. Um, it doesn't climb well, and you don't want to nose forward. Let the tail come up too soon because you'll strike a prop, and you will come to grief. All right, so everything looks copacetic. Let's... Okay, we're stable. Wow, okay, it moves. Wow, it really moves. Gotta keep happy feet here. Okay, gentle back pressure. And up we go. 
Now let's see if my gear lever works. My rudder seems to be trimmed excessively to the right, so I'm just going to do some rudder trim here. Okay. Maintain about 160, that's fine. Climbing at 1,500 feet per minute. Does the gear come up? No. All right, I'm going to have to fix that switch. So now it comes up. Gear up. And... Let's roll into a gentle left-hand turn and see how she flies. Okay, I'm pitched for 160, and that's a pretty healthy climb. I'm at a little bit less than uh, max power. Let me just move it up to max right there. See what she does. We're 2,000 feet. I'm going to just take a look at our temps and pressures. We're all good. I'm leaning on the left rudder a little bit too much, and that's probably just my exuberance. Rudder trim that should have a right trim now. Should actually put my feet on the floor like a good boy. Alright, now let's nose down and speed up a bit. And as we do, we'll close that cow flap. We'll come off the power a little bit, level off, bring the props back ever so slightly. Just give the engine a break. Throttle's not especially linear. There we go. All right, now as we edge closer to 250, we're going to have to close our cowl flaps. Just make sure all our temps are fine, and they are. So just close those flaps. And I'll take my feet off the rudder pedal and let's trim us out a little bit. See what she'll do straight and level here. Trimmed out at about 48 PSI, the amount of pressure as we trim up a little and hit a little turbulence. Look at that. Ooh. I'm going to make sure the flaps are fully up. They should be. Yeah, they are. Okay. Just making sure. And while we're at it, let's do a roll. And all right, that works. And while we're at it, let's take advantage of the dive capabilities of this plane. And let us come on down and we will do a low pass of Alcatraz. And then we'll zoot under the uh, Golden Gate Bridge. There's the marina off to the left. There's the Transamerica building coming over the Bay Bridge. Let's see. Am I going to turn right over Alcatraz, or am I going to turn right before it? Let's turn right on it. And we're 350 knots, and we're fat and happy. This plane can go very fast in a dive and is more than happy to do so. So we'll strafe Alcatraz for a start. Pull a little bit right here. And get on the deck. And roll out right about there. Got a little bit of happy feet on the rudder here. Let me a little anal retentive here. I want to come right through the center of the span right there. And we're just drifting a little lower there, going 400 knots almost. Okay, kids, don't try that at home. And let's come up into one of those maneuvers where you pull up and over and then roll out in the opposite direction. I just forgot the name of it. 
Okay, wings level, wings level, wings level, wings level-ish. Get over the top. Oh, we're going to stall over the top. No, we're fine. Sort of. All right, we'll roll out of that, like so, and push. Ooh, into a spin. All right. That was unfortunate, but let's put in opposite rudder. Ease off the stick. And not pull too many Gs here. And come across over the bridge. All right, what I did there was I ran out of energy at the top of that arc. And we discovered that not only can you stall this plane, but you can spin it. And we did about four rotations before I put in opposite rudder and neutralized the controls and then eased back in the power. And boy howdy, did it do its thing. Let's do a six point roll. And we'll do it low. Try to level ourselves out. Like, ooh, like so. So, come on. Like so. Getting a little turbulence down here. Feel that little wiggle? All right, so we'll do this counterclockwise. One, two, three, top rudder, four, five, more top rudder, six, push, seven, eight, nine, lose the top rudder, ten, 11, 12. Oh. All right, so that's fun. Uh, let's do a steep turn. And pull. Maintain the horizon. Pull a lot of Gs there. Use a little top rudder to keep ourselves from coming down. Nope, I'm descending. All right. We're good. Eh, lost a little altitude there. All right. Let's try one and not lose some altitude. Considering we're doing this at very low altitude already. All right, so level there. And turn, brake, up, pull, pull, up, 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 up. Uh, nope. Nope, losing too much altitude. All right, we'll figure that out. That's probably too much, probably too steep a turn for these World War II wings, or maybe it's my technique, but let's try it and see how steep we can do it and maintain a level steep turn. So let me just get us a little altitude. leaning on the engines a little bit hard. Let's get it right there. Okay. Just shy of max power and let's move our mixture to auto rich and see how it works. There's the field. All right. Now that we're back up at about 3,500 feet, level off. 250 knots, uh, level off. Let's try that again. Bring in a little more power. There we go. All right. Trim, 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 trim. A little more. Doesn't have a lot of... Well, it does eventually, but you have to sort of manhandle the trim a little bit. Takes a bit to make it uh, go. And you fly naturally a little nose up. See, watch. I'm going to get ourselves into a... There. Trim us, trim us out perfectly. And it feels like we're a little, see how it feels like we're a little nose high? All right, so let's turn and maintain altitude like, well, no, I'm climbing, like so. Right about. Okay, roll it in a little there. That's about the maximum without losing altitude. Okay. 
at least we know where that limit is. Let's see where we stall, because um, I don't have any good idea of a landing speed on this. So let's get up to a little bit of altitude here. Bring the pops forward. Check our temps. All right, well, they say this thing doesn't climb incredibly well, but it climbs well enough. All right, so we'll do a zero-G stall to start out. Let's trim ourselves. It's hard to get used to the fact that... Uh, all right, I'm trying to get into a zero rate of descent here, or as close to it as I can. And then roll off the power. Trimming up, up, up. Easing off the stick a little bit. There we go. Okay. Now I got enough up trim to handle this. So we're going to come off the power and come off the power. And that's about 175. Trim up, trim up, trim up, trim up. Come on. Okay, let's establish 150. Do I hear 140, 140, 140? 148 to the gentleman in the blue. Okay, I'm out of trim. No, I'm not out of trim. Got a little more trim. All right. Yes, I'm good. Okay, I'm still nose forward. Okay. Okay, now let's come down to 100. See how we do. Look at our angle of attack already. Now I think this thing just basically shudders and mushes. There's the shutter. It might drop a left wing if you really provoke it. And look at that. Just as predicted. It mushes and the left wing drops. Let's see if I can make it really drop. Yes. Into a spin. All right. We'll just lose that spin. And we will... Uh, Come on out of it. Pull a little bit too many G's right here. Look at that speed. Wow. I should have rolled inverted and come out of that more gently, but uh, no harm, no foul. This is a fighter plane. Let's just see where our trim is. All right. So let's land this little beastie. And the prescription is to um, have the cow flaps half open. There we go. And not to be inordinately low. Let's just slow ourselves down a little bit, though. We're descending like mad, so we're going to trim up. I'm just going to my neck a little bit so I can have some visibility and I found this thing is very very touchy on the rudder pedals as you come down and you really have to touch down with your feet almost neutral otherwise you'll start sliding off the runway so let's make sure our rudder is trimmed okay and it is coming down a little fast, so let's stabilize at about, if we can, at about 500 feet per minute. Bring our props to full, bring our mixture to full. A little bit high. What we can do is bring down our flaps. There they go. That's going to force this little nose down. And we will make for a landing on 1-9 right. I know we should have a right pattern entry here, but um, nobody's perfect. All right. Down can come the gear. Down can come the gear. There we go. Oh, let's let's be orthodox and fly one nine left. Oh, I'm sinking. All right, a little bit more power, and look at that torque. Wow.
All right, let's go around and do that again because that's already unstable. But now we get an idea of how quickly we sink, which is very quickly. Bring up the flaps. Bring down the manifold pressure. And we'll do runway 2, 8, left or right. Let's just get in the way of traffic here. Climb up to pattern altitude if we can. All right, apologies to the uh, 747s on their way up. Make sure our temps are still within sanity. They are, barely. And uh, we've learned a little lesson. Okay, so there's the golf course. We'll head out a little bit down um, the 101 right here. And then we'll come back around and we will understand that we're going to sink like a some bitch if we drop the gear and the flaps too soon. So we're at about 1,300 feet which means we should be halfway between the bridge and the golf course. And we don't want to be turning or going any slower than this, but we'll just trim nose up a little bit. Make sure my... Now ah, you see my gear is still down, which is why we're so draggy. Let's just do this right. Clean ourselves up fully. Not sure why the gear didn't come up, but it, it's probably my own fault misconfiguring the airplane or misconfiguring this, this model. Bring our trim to just about neutral on the rudder. That's about right. All right, when we get to the bridge, we should be about 2,000 or just 1,800, give or take. The bridge is right around the fix called Axmal, which is... Uh, for the approach we're on my 2 8 right. Let's try and make this work this time. There's our runway, all right. And we're now, again, a little bit fast, but we'll <laughs> we could fix that pretty damn soon, can't we? Just maintaining level right now slowing. It takes a lot of trim to make this thing work. Or at least it takes a lot of um, elevator trim to work. All right, try that one more time. And remembering that these were built for greenhorns to fly, so I, I you know, we got to bear in mind that uh, sophisticates like ourselves might have difficulty with it. All right, I'm too fast, so off comes the power. Bring the nose up. I think it helps to be in a slight slip when you land this thing, just so that you can see. All right, we're high, but we're slowing. Down come the flaps. Down comes the nose. In comes a little power. Okay, we're at 150. We should probably land at about 130. Let's bring out the gear uh, and get ready to bring in a lot of power. Look at that. Look at all the power it takes. Wow. Ho ho. And look at all the torque. Look at our drift. I think we got a crosswind. Let me just get our center line back. Oh, 
a lot, a lot, a lot of crosswind. This is not good. All right. Gonna level ourselves out like that. Come on. There we go. Oh, yeah. Come on. Full back pressure. Full back pressure. And brakes. Ha, 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 ho! Just, uh... I'm sure we're not on center line because I can't see a precious thing. But let's take a look at that. Oh, yeah. All right. So discretion was a better part of valor the first time around. Let's see if we can even see it from the tower. Holy mackerel. Look at us. So we're on a pretty high profile. The gear is out. Look at that. We're sinking like a stone. Look at the corrections I'm making with the rudder there. Look at the thing. Look, dance around. All right. You look at the old World War II movies, the newsreels. This is kind of what it looked like coming in. Look at that glide path. All right, let's see. Let's see how we did. I'm going to see this again from a, from a side view, from a spot view. Huh. There's the threshold. Look at that. Oh, little bounce. <laughs> It's so much fun. All right, let's let's just wait for that to recycle, and we'll see it again. Holy crap! Hmm. Mongo-like. All right, here we go. Look at how dirty that thing gets. Wow. Pretty stable. Could probably slow down a little bit more, and I could probably flare just a little bit sooner, but not quite as steeply. And kind of just settle in, into that three-point position and roll off the throttle and sort of let it let it ease itself onto the runway. Instead, I probably bounced because I flared right in the middle of that just descending onto the runway. But still, look at that. Let's see if we can move ourselves around a little bit before it's too late. There. Hmm. Look at that. I can't even see out of the damn thing. All right. Well, look. With that, um, there ain't much else to do. I mean, that's just plain old fun. So um, we're going to really learn how to fly this thing and fly it into some uh, inhospitable places. Maybe we'll do the old route that the Flying Tigers took and we'll fly this over the hump over uh, the Himalayas and uh, deliver one or two of them to the, uh, the Chinese fighting the, uh, the uh, Japanese occupation of Manchuria, but just to go back a few years. But in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed that. I sure did. So much fun. And uh, until we meet again, well, to quote the old... Uh, World War II song, we'll meet again, and uh, don't know where, don't know when, but we will meet again, and uh, maybe in the Mighty Dash, because uh, we have to go from Baghdad to Kuwait, but until we meet again, see you real soon, bye-bye.